Bulletproof vests. They sort of sound like the stuff of fantasy because bullets will go through anything. They go through walls and cars and you know light armoured vehicles and all the rest of it. So how could you possibly stop one? But you can because of the way the bullet deforms. It's simply a, a way of managing energy. A bullet is a very light thing but it goes very fast. So overall it has a lot of energy. It's just mass times velocity. But if you can manage that and take it away and send it somewhere else and spread it around then the bullet won't go through you. But I have spoken to people who have been hit by rifle rounds whilst wearing bulletproof vests or body armour and they say even though it means you don't get killed or seriously wounded it still hurts like hell. And the other thing that people forget is that if you're wearing the ceramic plate type body armour when a bullet hits it and the energy is dissipated through that it becomes extremely hot because obviously the energy has to go somewhere we know it can't just be destroyed. So all of the speed of the bullet, all its momentum, is converted into a hot spot. And some people have explained to me that they've been hit, but then they have to take the vest off very quickly because it's so hot it will actually burn them. You have to be very careful handling it as well. And you have to replace the sheets. They are one use only. What experience have you had with bulletproof vests? I have no personal experience of being shot in or not in a bulletproof vest. Well, bulletproof vest body armour is the issue, that is very heavy, but rifle rounds on the modern battlefield are extremely high. They're sort of three or f even four times as fast as some small handgun bullets. So just having folded fabric isn't enough. You do need the armour as well as the fabric arrangement, and then it does become heavy. There's no way around that. There is a belief that nanotechnology might be able to develop almost like a spider's silk material that will have fantastic properties for dissipating energy and spreading it out and deforming, but will be very light, at least as light as cotton, if not lighter. But we haven't got that yet. For the moment, soldiers and so on have to walk around effectively with great big roofing tiles stuck down their vests. It's pretty hard work. It is an arms race though, isn't it? Because if you make a better tank, you have to build a bigger tank to fight it with, with a bigger gun, so the shell will go through the armour, and so it goes on and on. If everybody agreed only to use air pistols, no, but we'd still have bulletproof vests because then you'd think, aha, I'll protect myself against the air pistol and the other bloke would build a bigger air pistol and then somebody would make a proper cartridge then before you know it, you've got a field gun and a tank. It's the same thing, isn't it, as a handgun and a bulletproof vest. So a Superman suit? Well, yes, I suppose potentially you could armour your whole body, not just this area. I mean, at the moment, you soldiers tend to armour this bit and the, the helmet has the armour in it as well. That's very heavy. You could cover your whole head, your legs, your arms and everything, but it would be so heavy, unless you were immensely strong, I don't think you'd be able to move. Ned Kelly and his gang, their armour was reckoned to be about 45 kilograms. You know, they had like a bucket helmet and a big tube thing over their bodies. They could hardly move in those. It's one of the reasons why they were caught in the end. They couldn't run away in their armour. Knife-proof vests would have to be a fabric in a matrix that couldn't be penetrated by the point of the weapon, I would guess. But that was true to some extent of leather armour that Romans wore. That was sort of blade proof, simply because it's very thick and very tough. That's why motorcycle riders wear leather. It takes a long time to wear through and it's very slippery, so you slide down the road rather than tumbling, which would cause injury. It's still quite difficult to beat leather. There are modern Kevlar-based fabrics that have the same abrasion resistance as cowhide and kangaroo skin, but it's pretty difficult. Leather is fantastic. Um, I haven't done any jousting, I've done a little bit of sword fighting, but it was all cardboard armour and, you know, sort of pretend plastic swords, so it wasn't, there was no danger of death or serious injury. There was only really the danger of comedy, as you make a big thrust at someone and the sword just snaps in half. All the word Kellogg's is revealed as a bit of paint comes off the cardboard. <laughs>